behold Jesus, behold the glory of God. That if you hold Jesus in view, you will become like him. You'll, you'll think like he thinks. You'll see how he sees. You're, you're, you're going to feel like he feels. This is how we change, how we grow. When you and I behold the glory of God with unveiled face, Paul says, you will be transformed. What you behold is what you become. That's what Paul is saying. But let's break this down a little bit more. And our focus is mainly going to be on verse 18. So the Apostle Paul says there, and we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, and then we'll stop there for just a second. I want us to notice, first of all, that what Paul is saying here applies to everybody. That is, all of us who are in Christ, all of us who have made the decision to trust Jesus with our lives. So, that's to say, this isn't just for the Apostle Pauls of the world. It's not a message just for pastors or, or elders only. All followers of Jesus have full access to God's glory revealed in Jesus Christ. And this is so significant because actually in the Old Testament, that wasn't true. This wasn't the case. See, in the Old Testament, things were veiled. Things were covered. That's what Paul is getting at here. And it's starting in verse 12. And we can actually read about this story, it's worth your time, in Exodus 34, but I'll summarize it for you. We know that Moses, this man who had great faith, had time to doubt, made a lot of mistakes, but had great faith. The man who led with God's help, of course, the Israelites, two million people, uh, through the Red Sea, out of Egypt. They're wandering around, around God, and Moses has this incredible relationship with the Lord. Okay. And what we find there, it might be hard for us to picture this, understand, believe, but what we read here is that Moses would live certainly, not like spiritually, literally, he would go up to this mountain, Mount Sinai, and he would go up there to meet with the Lord. Okay. Meet with God to, to see Him. Okay, but God's glory, we read, was so great, so magnificent that Moses, God tells Moses, "You can only see a part of me, the backside of me, as I walk by you in this cave. Because if you actually see me, look upon my face, right? If you behold me in full glory, you'll go die." Okay? And so most like, deal, it's worth it, right? I'll go up there just to see a part of you. And, and, and after he, Moses would have this you know, interaction with the Lord, you know, learning, there's wisdom there, and worship, what we read is that Moses would actually come down from that mountain, and his face was shining like the sun. It was bright after he beheld the Lord. Moses would come down this mountain with God's glory reflected off his face. In fact, you can see there that in the text that his face was so bright that it actually terrified the Israelites. They were afraid, like, you know, like he looks like some kind of, like, I don't know, angelic being or freak. I don't know. Okay, the text doesn't say, but he, they're terrified of him. And so in light of that, because of that, Moses would actually put a veil over his face every time he would come down the mountain. So he's going up to meet the Lord, he'd take the veil off, he'd behold the Lord, worship, learn, he'd come back down the mountain, put the veil on, and then be in front of the people. And he would veil his face, we learn, to symbolize the fact that what he received from the Lord was only a veiled revelation. In other words, not everyone at this time had full access to God and his glory. That's the point. And what Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 15, is that this veil, this veil is actually still over the hearts of everyone who reads the law of Moses at the Old Testament, people who read the Old Testament, but who don't know about Jesus. That veil is 
still there. In other words, the truth is covered. Those who don't know Christ are blinded to the reality. They're blinded to the truth. There's a veil that covers their eyes. But then, Paul says in the next verse, verse 16, that when one turns to the Lord, that veil that covers your eyes is removed. But when one turns to the Lord, he says, the veil is removed. And we need to see the magnitude of this statement here. It's short, but profound. Because get this. This is saying that all that you need, all that you need to know about God, all God wants to disclose about himself, all the beauty of his character, all his attributes, all his love, his loyalty, his mercy, his grace, his power, his wisdom, his compassion, his sympathy, his care, Listen, all of his saving purposes, all of his ability to supply every single thing that we could ever need, all things necessary to save us, all things necessary to empower us, all things necessary to console us, comfort us, all things necessary to equip us, all things necessary to prepare us for service, to prepare us for glory. Everything that we need is unveiled in Jesus Christ. When we turn and see Jesus Christ, or, okay, you could just say, we see God in blazing glory in the face of the person of Jesus Christ. When you and I turn from ourselves, when you make the decision to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus, you see God. That's what Paul says. And I can't emphasize this point enough. I can't. Before Jesus, there had never, there had never been a clear view of God. Never. But now, we all, we all, Paul says, can have a clear view. The veil of unbelief that covers our eyes can and will be removed when we turn to Jesus Christ. And when you do that, when you look to Jesus, when you behold Christ, what is the promise for us? Well, Paul tells us clearly, and we all, with unveiled face, there it is, beholding the glory of the Lord are what? Are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. In other words, when we behold Jesus with eyes of faith, we are transformed. Transformed there is the word metamorphosis. Okay? The Greek word metamorphosis, like a catapult who transforms into a butterfly, same word. It means that we are not just renewed, but we are actually made brand new. And that's got to be very clear for us as followers of Jesus. You know, I think sometimes, this is off my notes, which means I'm in trouble, but uh, I think sometimes so many of us, you know, we come to Christ and we picture Jesus in the gospel like we have this broken, run-down car. And then God comes along, and it's like a mechanic, and he just fixes up that car, and polishes that old broken car, and puts new parts on it, a new engine, and changes the transmission, new tires, he's like, great, go, you're, you're, you're new. That's not the gospel. The gospel is that that old car, who you were, is actually crushed, kicked away, thrown out, and you are given a new car. You're not just being made new, you are literally new in Christ. We become more like Jesus, Paul says, when we behold Jesus from one degree of glory to another. It means that as we focus on Christ, when we fix our eyes on Christ, God actually does a work in us. Our work, behold him. God's work, sanctify, shape us into the image of his son. He sanctifies us, molds us into Christ's likeness. And notice this as well. That this is an ongoing thing. 
from glory to glory to glory, it can just keep going. That's how the verse reads. From glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. As we behold Jesus, as we fix our eyes on him, as we hold him in view, as we set our hearts on him, we become more like him. And I think this is so important for us to see and realize. That this becoming like Christ is not instantaneous. It's progressive. It's from one degree to the next. Step by step, we are moving towards him as we behold him. And so today, maybe you're here and you find yourself in a place of discouragement. Uh, maybe you feel like you're stagnant in your faith. Or, or maybe it seems like you're not changing, even though you've been following Jesus for years. Hear these words from Paul in the next chapter of 2 Corinthians. This is chapter 4, starting in verse 16. Those who are discouraged, he says, So do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. It's a promise. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison.